A few years ago, when I was 13 years old, I attended a summer camp that I loved very much. I would go there every summer to make new friends and see old ones too. But after my last experience at summer camp, I would never be going again. It was a Tuesday, I believe, and we had just finished eating our lunch. After lunch, the group had a choice of either going swimming or fishing. The camp did have a small lake where you could go fishing, and I myself had never tried it. I figured I might as well give it a shot. It was just me and a few other kids, as the instructor was teaching us how to put the hook on the line. I saw a man emerge from the tree line on the other side of the lake. I thought nothing of it and continued to focus on trying to get a good catch. However, I thought I caught the man's eyes looking in my direction. And eventually, I looked up at him. He was indeed just staring right at me. Let me give you a description of this man. He had a blue jacket, sweatpants, and was wearing sandals along with a big hat. I didn't know who this person was. I went over to the instructor to tell him about this mysterious man. But of course, as soon as I told him about the guy, the man was already gone. I continued fishing for about another hour before it was time for the group to go back inside the gym for sports. At one point, I had to use the restroom though so I started making my way over to the women's restroom. I stepped inside, and I heard a man's voice call out to me, hello again. Before I could even say something, the same man from earlier stepped out from one of the stalls and looked right at me. I saw craziness in his red eyes and was disgusted by the smell of marijuana on him. He then whispered to me, come with me. I want you to see something cool. I walked over to the door to exit the restroom, but he tried to block me from leaving and grabbed me hard by the arm. He then said to me in a furious tone, if you scream, I will kill you. Do you understand? I nodded my head, telling him that I understood. My dad had always told me to keep calm and try to think of what to do if I ever came across a situation like this. That's exactly what I did. I kept calm and did everything the man asked. As he was walking out with me while holding my arm, I heard a deep voice yell from behind us. Thank God it was a police officer. I immediately began screaming and kicking, trying to fight for my life. After a few seconds, the man let go and ran to his car police officer chased after him, and another officer escorted me to the gym where the rest of the group was. He explained what happened to the counselor and staff. My mom picked me up early that day, and I never went back to summer camp again. My advice is to please be careful, because there are dangerous people out there all around, and you never know what they might do if they catch you. A few years ago, I was on a camping trip with the scouts for a week. I've always been an outdoors person, and that's really the main reason why I joined the scouts in the first place. We were going to a camp in North Carolina, and we lived in Florida, so we would be taking a long bus trip there. We left on Friday and got there Saturday evening. Once we got there, our scoutmaster told us to unpack everything and get our tents set up as quickly as we could. We only had a good hour or so of daylight left anyway. Within about 45 minutes, we had been set up and started cooking our meals. My friend, we'll call him Eric, who was also in the scouts and who I'm still friends with to this day, told us we should go and explore the woods a bit. Now, I wasn't exactly sure if the scouts were allowed to go exploring into the woods, but our scout master had said earlier that we could go anywhere as long as we were with another scout. Therefore, we figured it would be okay. Anyway, we started making our way into the woods with our flashlights. It was getting quite dark now. We walked about 10 minutes or so when we stumbled across this small little shed 
that looked like it had been abandoned for the past 60 years at least. At this point, we weren't sure what to make of it. Eric said that we should go inside and look around. Me, on the other hand, knew we were going to get into serious trouble if we trespassed inside. I said no, but Eric went on and called me a wuss and said that I was always afraid of everything. It honestly bothered me at the time, so I sighed and said we could go in for a few minutes. The door was basically broken down, so we didn't have any problems getting inside. We got inside and turned on our flashlights. It was basically empty. There was some furniture, but that was pretty much it. Eric then said, what is that? A few seconds later, we heard a window from the other side of the house smash open. We then realized there was more than one person bolted up the stairs, awakening both my aunt and the baby. We heard a pair of footsteps coming up the stairs fast behind us. We took that chance to climb out of our window and drop down to the ground. We didn't care what was in front of us, only what was behind. We booked it to the neighbor's house and called the police. They investigated and told us the house had been broken into and many valuables had been stolen. I remember it being a kind of cold night in October. The day had been quite long, and I was exhausted from a work trip that... into the phone, trying not to attract attention from the men in the neighboring room. I quickly explained the situation to the dispatcher, telling them about the violent argument, the sounds of a physical altercation, and the desperate pleas for mercy I had overheard. The dispatcher assured me that help was on the way and advised me to stay put and not confront the men myself. I hung up the phone and waited anxiously, hoping that the police would arrive soon. Meanwhile, the commotion next door seemed to intensify. I could hear the sound of furniture being overturned and the muffled cries of the man named Dirk. It was a terrifying ordeal and I felt helpless listening to the violence unfolding just a few feet away. Minutes felt like hours as I waited for the sound of sirens outside. Finally, I heard the distant wail of approaching police cars. Relief flooded through me as I knew that help was finally here. I heard the sound of heavy footsteps in the hallway as the police officers rushed to the scene. I stayed inside my room peeking through the peephole to watch as they banged on the door of the neighboring room and shouted for the occupants to come out with their hands up. There was a tense standoff for a few moments before the door swung open and the two men were apprehended by the police. I breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that the ordeal was finally over. The police took my statement and thanked me for alerting them to the situation. They assured me that Dirk would receive medical attention and that they would thoroughly investigate the incident. As the adrenaline began to fade, I felt a wave of exhaustion wash over me. I sank onto the bed, grateful that I had acted quickly and decisively to help someone in need. Despite the unsettling experience, I knew that I had done the right thing by speaking up and contacting the authorities. From that day forward, I vowed to always trust my instincts and never hesitate to intervene if I suspected that someone was in danger. It was a harrowing experience, but it taught me the importance of being vigilant and proactive in ensuring the safety of others. And as for the rundown hotel, I made a mental note to never stay there again. It may have been a convenient stop on the road, but the dangers lurking within its walls were far too great to ignore. You context. The story continues as the narrator describes their experience of contacting the police and waiting anxiously for help to arrive. They recount the terrifying moments of hearing gunshots the agonizing screams of the victim next door. Despite feeling helpless, 
they made the brave decision to stay hidden and call for assistance. The police eventually arrived, and the narrator provided a statement to the officers. They were then taken to the police station to give a formal statement to a detective. Throughout the process, the narrator reflects on the tragic outcome and the sense of connection they feel towards the victim, even though they had never met. As the story concludes, the narrator expresses their sadness over the lack of justice for the victim and the lasting trauma from the experience. Despite the trauma, they acknowledge their gratitude for still having their own life and the realization of how different life decisions can lead to vastly different outcomes. In summary, the narrative highlights the narrator's bravery in the face of danger, their empathy towards the victim, and the harsh reality of violence and injustice in the world. Grim atmosphere, the room was dimly lit with flickering fluorescent lights casting eerie shadows across the peeling wallpaper. The air was heavy with the smell of stale cigarette smoke and mildew, making my stomach churn in disgust. Despite my initial reservations, I knew I had no other option but to make the best of it and try to get some rest before my training course the next day. I dropped my bags on the worn out carpet and hesitantly approached the bed pulling back the musty covers and hoping for at least a few hours of sleep. As I settled in, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the air. Something about this place just didn't sit right with me, but exhaustion soon overtook my senses and I drifted off into a fitful sleep. I was jolted awake in the middle of the night by the sound of footsteps outside my door. My heart raced as I strained to listen, hoping it was just another guest returning to their room. But the footsteps grew louder and more deliberate, echoing ominously in the silence of the hallway. Suddenly, there was a sharp knock on my door, followed by a voice calling out, housekeeping. My blood ran cold as I realized it was well past midnight there was no reason for housekeeping to be making rounds at this hour. Panic surged through me as I scrambled to my feet, my mind racing with thoughts of escape. I tiptoed to the door, peering through the peephole with trepidation. Outside stood a shadowy figure, their features obscured by the dim light of the hallway. Instinctively, I knew that opening that door would spell disaster so I remained frozen in place, praying for them to go away. But they didn't. Instead, the knocking grew more insistent, accompanied by muffled whispers that sent shivers down my spine. I backed away from the door, my heart pounding in my chest as I searched frantically for a way out of this nightmare. Just then, I heard the sound of footsteps retreating down the hallway, followed by the distant click of a door closing. Relief flooded through me as I realized that whoever it was had finally given up and left. But the sense of unease lingered, gnawing at the edges of my consciousness as I huddled in that dingy motel room, counting down the hours until morning. Little did I know, the worst was yet to come, and the events of that night would haunt me for years to come, terrifying ordeal alive. As I waited for the police to arrive, I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, the fear gripping me like a vice. The men outside my car were growing increasingly agitated, pounding on the windows and shouting threats in a language I couldn't understand. I huddled in the front seat, clutching my phone tightly and praying for help to arrive soon. The operator on the line 
provided a lifeline of support. Her calm voice cutting through the chaos and giving me the strength to keep going. Minutes felt like hours as I waited for the sound of approaching sirens. Every second dragging by agonizingly slow, I could see the men outside growing more desperate, their shouts turning into violent gestures as they attempted to break into my car. Finally, just when I thought I couldn't hold on any longer, the distant wail of police sirens pierced through the night air. Relief flooded through me as I watched the flashing lights draw nearer, signaling the arrival of help at last. The men outside must have heard the sirens too, because they quickly scattered, disappearing into the darkness as the police cars pulled up to my car. Officers swarmed around me, their presence a welcome sight after the terror of the past few moments. They quickly assessed the situation, ensuring that I was unharmed before turning their attention to the men who had been threatening me. With their assistance, the men were apprehended and taken into custody, their plans thwarted by the timely intervention of law enforcement. As I sat in the safety of the police car, wrapped in a blanket and still shaking from the adrenaline, I couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of gratitude. Gratitude for the swift response of the police, for the reassuring presence of the 911 operator, and for the fact that I had survived to see another day. The events of that night would stay with me forever. A stark reminder of the dangers that lurk in the darkness and the importance of remaining vigilant in the face of danger. But as I looked out at the flashing lights of the police cars, I knew that I was safe. And that was all that mattered in the end. Back, but other than that, I was relatively okay. The adrenaline was still coursing through my veins as I sat in the hospital bed, replaying the events of the night over and over in my mind. The police officers who had arrived on the scene had commended me for my bravery, but I couldn't shake the feeling of guilt and remorse for the violence I had unleashed upon the men who had threatened me. Despite their intentions, I couldn't help but wonder if there had been another way to resolve the situation without resorting to such extreme measures. As I reflected on the events of that night, I realized that sometimes survival means doing whatever it takes to protect yourself, even if it means resorting to violence. It was a sobering realization, but one that I knew I would carry with me for the rest of my life. In the days that followed, I struggled to come to terms with what had happened, grappling with feelings of fear, anger, and confusion. But with the support of friends, family, and therapy, I slowly began to heal from the trauma of that night. I also made a vow to myself to never take my safety for granted again, to always trust my instincts, and to never hesitate to ask for help when I needed it. The experience had taught me valuable lessons about resilience, courage, and the strength of the human spirit. As I finally left the hospital and returned home, I knew that I would never forget the harrowing ordeal I had endured, but I also knew that I was stronger because of it, and that I would carry the lessons I had learned with me for the rest of my life. Noticed a man standing off to the side, about 50 yards away. He seemed to be just staring at me, which made me feel uneasy. I continued walking, trying to ignore him couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. As I got closer to where he was standing, I noticed something strange. He wasn't moving at all, 
just standing there completely still, like a statue. It was unnerving, to say the least. I quickened my pace, eager to get away from him. But just as I was about to pass him, he suddenly lunged forward, sprinting towards me with surprising speed. My heart raced as I realized he was coming straight for me, and I knew I had to act fast. Instinct took over, and I raised my shotgun, aiming it in his direction. I shouted at him to stop, but he didn't listen. He kept coming, his eyes wild with some unknown intent. I fired a warning shot into the air, hoping to scare him off, but he didn't even flinch. He just kept running, getting closer and closer with each passing second. In that moment, I knew I had no choice. I aimed my shotgun directly at him and pulled the trigger. The blast echoed through the forest, deafening in the quiet stillness of the woods. The man stumbled and fell to the ground, unmoving. I approached cautiously, keeping my gun trained on him as I checked for any signs of life. But it was too late. He was already gone. I stood there for a moment, trying to catch my breath and calm my racing heart. What had just happened? Why had he attacked me out of nowhere? I searched the area for any clues, but there was nothing. No indication of who he was or why he had come after me. It was like he had appeared out of thin air, only to vanish just as quickly. Shaken but determined to get to the bottom of what had happened, I made my way back to my car and called the authorities. They arrived quickly, taking statements and securing the scene. As I drove home that evening, my mind was racing with questions. Who was that man? And what had driven him to attack me so suddenly and violently? To this day, I still don't have all the answers. But one thing is for sure. That experience will stay with me for the rest of my life. A reminder of the dangers that lurk in even the most remote corners of the world. Ensure I was keeping my distance from him, but the feeling of being watched never left me. Every rustle of the wind through the trees made me jump. Every snap of a twig sounded like footsteps behind me. I gripped my shotgun tightly, ready to defend myself if necessary. As I neared the end of the trail, I couldn't shake the feeling that the man was still out there, watching me, waiting for the right moment to strike. I quickened my pace, desperate to get back to my car and put as much distance between me and him as possible. Finally, I reached the clearing where my car was parked. I practically ran the last few yards, my heart pounding in my chest. I threw open the door and practically dove inside, slamming it shut behind me. I sat there for a moment, trying to catch my breath and calm my racing thoughts. What had just happened out there? Who was that man? And what did he want from me? I started the car and peeled out of the parking lot, eager to leave that place far behind me. As I drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the pit of my stomach. That encounter had shaken me to my core, and I knew it would be a long time before I felt safe in those woods again. But despite the fear and uncertainty, I was grateful to have made it out of there alive. And as I drove home, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride in myself for staying calm and keeping my wits about me in the face of danger. It was a reminder that even in the most terrifying of situations, I was capable of staying strong and protecting myself. As I pulled into my driveway and stepped out of the car, I made a silent vow to myself. I would never let my guard down in the wilderness again. From now on, I would always be prepared for whatever dangers might come my way, no matter how remote or unlikely they may seem. Felt incredibly uncomfortable 
letting a stranger into my apartment, especially considering I hadn't requested any follow-up service. I told him everything was fine and that he could leave, but he insisted that he needed to come inside and check the equipment. Feeling uneasy but not wanting to cause a scene, I reluctantly let him in. He immediately started asking invasive questions about my personal life, making me feel even more uncomfortable. I tried to keep the conversation brief and focused on the task at hand, but he seemed more interested in prying into my personal affairs. After what felt like an eternity, he finally finished his supposed inspection and left my apartment. I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right about the whole encounter. I made sure to lock all the doors and windows and double-checked to ensure that nothing had been tampered with. Later that day, I called the company to report the incident and express my concerns about the technician's behavior. They assured me that they would look into it and apologized for any discomfort I had experienced. They also confirmed that they had not sent anyone to follow up on the installation. From that day on, I made sure to always be cautious when letting strangers into my home and to trust my instincts if something didn't feel right. It was a valuable lesson in prioritizing my own safety and setting boundaries with others, even if it meant being perceived as rude or impolite, looked up at me, and I realized she wasn't as old as she appeared. She was probably only in her forties she gave me vague directions, and as I was about to leave, she asked me for some spare change I reached into my pocket to grab a few dollars to give her. When I felt a sharp pain in my side, I looked down to see her hand digging into my pocket, trying to grab my wallet. I instinctively pushed her away, and she stumbled back a few steps before quickly regaining her balance. She gave me a menacing look and muttered something under her breath before quickly walking away. I was shaken up by the encounter, but relieved that I hadn't been seriously hurt or robbed. I made my way back to my hotel as quickly as possible, keeping an eye out for any other potential dangers along the way. Once I got back to my room, I made sure to lock the door securely and double-checked that all the windows were closed. I couldn't shake the feeling of vulnerability after what had happened, so I stayed up for a while, replaying the events in my mind and reflecting on the dangers of navigating unfamiliar cities alone, especially late at night. The next morning, I reported the incident to the hotel staff and they assured me that they would notify the authorities and increase security measures in the area. I also made sure to warn my coworkers about the encounter and urge them to be cautious when venturing out alone, especially late at night. It was a sobering reminder of the importance of staying vigilant and aware of one's surroundings, especially in unfamiliar or potentially dangerous situations. From then on, I made sure to always have a fully charged phone with me when traveling and to avoid walking alone late at night whenever possible. It sounds like you had a truly terrifying encounter with a person who seemed to be in a distressed state. The description you provided of her appearance and behavior is indeed chilling and encountering someone like that in the middle of the night would understandably be extremely unsettling. It's important to trust your instincts in situations like this and prioritize your safety above all else. By quickly leaving the area and avoiding the road she warned you about, you likely avoided potential danger. Encounters with individuals experiencing mental health crises can be frightening essential to 
approach these situations with compassion and understanding. It's possible that the woman you encountered was experiencing hallucinations or delusions, which can sometimes lead to unpredictable behavior. In such situations, it's advisable to contact local authorities or emergency services to ensure the person receives the appropriate help and support they may need. Additionally, if you feel threatened or unsafe, it's crucial to remove yourself from the situation as safely and quickly as possible. Remembering to stay aware of your surroundings and trusting your instincts can help you navigate unexpected and potentially dangerous encounters like this one. It's a testament to your quick thinking and reaction that you were able to stay safe in such a frightening situation. In conclusion, these accounts vividly illustrate the unpredictability and potential dangers of encountering unfamiliar individuals, particularly in isolated or unfamiliar environments. Each narrative underscores the importance of trusting one's instincts, remaining vigilant, and taking proactive steps to ensure personal safety. Whether it's navigating encounters with suspicious individuals, responding to unexpected behavior, or heeding warnings from others, these stories highlight the critical role of awareness and preparedness in avoiding potential harm. While these experiences may be unsettling, they also serve as valuable reminders to prioritize safety, trust intuition, and take appropriate action when faced with uncertain or threatening situations. By sharing these narratives, we not only raise awareness about the realities of personal safety, but also underscore the resilience and resourcefulness demonstrated by individuals in the face of adversity. Ultimately, these encounters serve as powerful lessons in navigating the complexities of human interactions and reaffirm the importance of staying alert, informed, and prepared in our daily lives.